I'm Director General of the National Center for Arts and Culture, a historian and a researcher. Um, we are commemorating the bicentenary of the founding of the settlement of Georgetown on Makati Island, uh, purchased by the British from the King of Kataba on the 23rd of April, 1823. Okay, now, this island, of course, existed thousands and thousands of years ago. Okay, but what we are commemorating is the purchase of the island for it to be used for two reasons. One, to use it as a center of British mercantile interests. Remember, this was a, an, uh, a time when James Island had been destroyed because of the wars between the French and the British. Battles had just been purchased, so the British needed another strategic location on the River Gambia so as to strengthen their mercantile interests the presence of their traders in the River Gambia. And why the River Gambia specifically? Because it was the most navigable river which gave I mean, people an opportunity to trade deep into the hinterland up to present the Guinea Conakry. Okay? The other reason why it was purchased was the British wanted a place to resettle the tens of thousands of Africans who had been freed after the abolition of slavery in 1807. Some of them had been rescued from the slave ships at the Royal Navy. Where do you take them? You cannot take them back to where they were captured from. So Makati here, um, Freetown in Sierra Leone, and Bathos, um, now Banju, became three well-known centers where these formerly enslaved people can be resettled. And now, as time went on, they evolved into a, a new um, I mean, I mean, I mean, ethnic group. We now call it AKA, who are I mean, playing a very, very important role in the economic, social, and political history of our country. So you can see that by commemorating, we are celebrating one, entrepreneurship. Here was a trade center. We had Lebanese, Syrians, British, French traders, Aku traders, Jews, they were all here. We are also celebrating homecoming. Okay. We are also, I mean, I mean, I mean, you know, celebrating, I mean, tolerance. Because remember, the, um, the, 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 you know, the liberated Africans came and found some people here. Different religion, different language. But they coexisted. So coexistence. Yes. Uh, thank you very much for uh, that brief uh, introduction of the event. Uh, another question is: uh, We want to know whether there is any trace of the descendant of these free slaves. The colonial graveyard, just 200 meters from here, where um, they were buried. Uh, if you go there, you'll be surprised the diversity of people who live on this land. French, British, Aku, Mansuanka, Manjago, all of them, Jews, you know, buried in, in, in that colonial cemetery. Just to give you how diverse the population of this island is. Number two, this island, the streets of Georgetown, were planned to be just like any other British town. That's why you stand at the end there, you can look up to the last. I, I, you don't find this in Serapunda or in Bakau. It was a well-planned well town. Because the British, when they purchased the island, they brought a surveyor, a colonial surveyor from England to plan the settlement so as to make it a typical, I mean, I mean, I mean, British, you know, town. Okay? Number three, the old governor's, you know, residence is here. It was built as far back as the 1870s. All the commissions, okay, of Makati Island, as it was used to be called, now called Central River, used to be based there. So this was like the capital of the rural Gambia. It's still there. Number four, if you look at the waterfront, you see the remnants of the old trading houses. And the 
warehouses. You know, the wharf is there. You know, where the ships you know, used to anchor. Because ships used to come all the way from Sweden or from France. You come to Georgetown, you pick granules, because here was the granules capital, and take it. I know, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean for export. And five, every ethnic group is present on this island. It's a rare Gambian community where you can find everybody. That tells you that it had a history of homogeneity, of, you know, of cosmopolitanism. Yes. We have different names like Janjambure, Georgetown, and Makati Island. Can you differentiate? Well, very good question. Well, I mean, I mean, Makati Island was the name given to the island, the whole island, after Sir Charles Makati, who was the British um, governor for the West African territories. He died in 1824, a year after the island was purchased. But the settlement on the island was called Georgetown, after King George, by one of the British I mean, I mean monarchs. Okay? Now, on paper, when the British came to purchase it, they said there was a small hamlet called Limania, where you had a dara and a like, religious instructor. You know, with maybe a dozen or so talents. But the local people say the original name of the island is Janjan Bure. Because they said two brothers, Janjan and Bure, who were hunters, now and then they would leave their village around Germany, okay, come here, maybe in the dry season, hunt and go back. So that's why you have all these, I mean, I mean names. But what is clear is that in 1998, the government decided to change the name to Janjambure. Yes. But, uh, looking at Janjambure, uh, if, you, if you go by the historical significance, it seems uh, there are a lot of development needed. Oh well, that's why we are debating here in the next one hour. Because part of the symposium, there will be you know, a professor who will talk on that, on the potential of making Makati here as a heritage uh, destination. Everything you touch here is history. Even this you know, building you are seeing here, I mean, it's 100 years old. Everything, everything you touch here is history. So, so of course, I mean, I mean those are things that I mean, I mean, are worth discussing, how to invest so as to make the island into like, like heritage capital, where if you are a tourist or a visitor or a scholar or a researcher interested in heritage, you start from here. The potential is there. The Kankura, for example. That's why at the NCAC, we have a whole museum called the Kankura Center, because all Gambians accept Makati as the home of the Kankura. So all these are potentials that, of course, can be, can be exploited. How is your institution uh, preserving the, uh, the remnants of uh, uh, British activities or the slave trade on this uh, island, uh, particularly uh, the slave house and other instruments that uh, could be very crucial for tourism? Uh, well, the festival is one, true festival, because you showcase, so it's good. I mean, we have worked with partners to do signage, some of the major heritage sites. Okay. Three, we have trained some tour guides here from the community, like local youth, you know, to be able to explain the history of the island, you know, and its significance. Okay. And number four, we also write about the island and speak about it during the festivals. Because remember, apart from this festival, in three weeks' time, we are going to invite you again for the Concurrent Festival, which is annual. So through these activities, we enhance the visibility of the island's heritage. And when you enhance the visibility, people will be readier to protect what is left of the heritage. Thank you. And the most important question is, you and told me one. that the, the, the slaves were brought here. Yeah. Where are their families? They all moved out. Um, by the 1930s, most of the Akus who established this town were moving out to battles. To Banjo. Why? The, the desire for education. Here you could only go up to standard four. And you know, the Akus, they invested so much in education. So many of them have to move their children first to be able to go to standard five, standard six, standard seven, which is now like grade 12. 
to a decline in river transport. It's an island. It's not meant to be reached from, you know, by road. You came by road, but that was not an island. What an island is meant for? An island is meant to be reached by river. You got onto a boat, sail and come. But after independence, our government became more interested in building roads. So the river transport declined. So places like Georgetown, like Kuntaur, like Kaur, they also declined because the river traffic has stopped. So now you have Soma, Birkamaba, which are on the highway, or Wasu, that are now growing. So many of the Akus also left because, I mean, I mean, there was no longer business. The trading companies closed, people became jobless, and the town started to suffer a decline. But thank God, now there is a revival of Makati. And the bridge is built, you can see the roads have been repaired, I mean, there's infrastructure, you know, so, so now um, there's a lot of hope for this settlement. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you.